Um, if you haven't, if you're not in a time crunch and you're just looking for something to put on your supply shelf, if you're helping lost pets in your area, watch the clearance racks, especially right after hunting season um, at the at the outdoor supply places um, or even at Walmart. I have found trail cameras, perfectly good trail cameras, at Walmart on clearance for fifteen dollars. Oh. Um, and yeah, and and then bear in mind that you still usually you have to pick up the SD cards, which you know are usually seven eight dollars each, to, or some of you find them a bit cheaper than that, and the batteries. But the camp, but yeah, we have we have gotten perfectly good cameras for fifteen bucks, um, and that actually works better for us anyway because. You know, we're lending them out to a lot of people, and sometimes we don't get them back, and sometimes mm-hmm. they get stolen and stuff. So, you know, um, all you're really wanting to do is get an image of your dog on the camera. But yeah, you can you can spend hundreds of dollars, and you can spend a lot of money on the um, cellular service to send the picture directly to your phone. That's great, but it's not necessary. Mm-hmm. And even going back, you know many years now when before trail cameras became affordable for everybody um we used to do some really low-tech stuff to see if a dog had been visiting and one of the one of the you know things was just to sprinkle cornstarch in front of the feeding station and then go and check to see what kind of tracks were there to see what they've been visiting um so that or even dampening like a white uh towel and laying it down, laying it down on the ground, and then putting the bowl on top of it, and you can, you know, if it's if, if the terrain is the right kind of terrain, you'll often mm-hmm. pick up paw prints on that towel. So um, it's it's you, you know you just kind of want to be creative and think of ways that you can try to figure out if you if your dog has been visiting because that's that's what you want to know. Mm-hmm. So. Trail cameras are great, of course, because they give us a time and date stamp, and even the cheap, cheap, cheap ones do that. Mm-hmm. So um, then you can see what time your your dog was visiting. But if if you can't put your the other thing I would say about trail cameras is that if you can't afford one yourself, or if you can't get your hands on one, in you know for whatever reason you don't live near a hunting supply store or a Walmart that's carrying them, um, ask around because there is a lot of people out there now that have them. They either use them to watch wildlife in their backyard or their hunters and they a lot of hunters have multiple trail cameras that are just lying around on their shelf somewhere um, and they're usually happy to lend them out mm-hmm. so um so, you know just ask around and see yeah. if you can borrow one before you spend the money to buy one um are those popular by you yet you know i haven't heard of people using them every time i hear you talk about it i think about you know we should probably get some of these into our uh organization to have available for people um and then you know another day comes by and another right, day right. goes by <laughs> but right. yeah i mean every time you talk about it i write it down as i'm writing it down today yeah. and i yeah. really think that you know it's something we should invest in especially for my one volunteer that lives down in northport she's like our expert um search and rescue person uh she should at least have one i think or a yeah. couple because she's very good at it um so i should probably do that for her mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah they're a great tool in the toolkit but again like they just don't have to be the super duper nice expensive ones which are yeah. are lovely but but expensive yeah so. yeah um and so, so then the, the last, I think the last thing on my list here is like a trap. So, um, traps are expensive and they're often hard to come by. You know, if you, if you're missing your dog and you, you know, it's a large dog and then you realize you need a large dog trap and then you have to Google and figure out where you're going to buy one from, um, they generally can, you know, run about $400. Mm. Um, and then you have to have them delivered and they're huge. So it's not cheap to have them delivered. Sometimes you even have to wait to have one made if they they don't have one in stock. Um, so sometimes you have to be a little bit creative. So you can, first of all, I would always say ask around, um, check with all of your local animal shelters, um, your animal control facilities, even your police departments, 
see if anybody has one that they would rent you or lend you because often they will and often they're keeping them just for that purpose right mm -hmm. they you know they've got some that that's what they're that's what they're there for um and they may charge you a deposit they may charge you a hefty deposit because they can't afford to lose them so mm -hmm. you may be looking at a couple hundred dollar deposit but then you'll get that deposit back when you return the trap undamaged Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, and they do that for their own protection because traps definitely go missing. So, and, and if you're putting a trap out, we always recommend padlocking it with a really heavy piece of chain to something that's not going to move. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to prevent it being stolen totally because somebody could still come with bolt cutters and cut the, the, the chain and the lock. Um, but it will just at least deter them a little bit. Um. And, and I don't know why people want to steal traps. I, I'm not sure if it's for the, the price of the scrap metal or what it is, but they do walk away. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so the other thing is if you can't, you know, borrow or rent one, um, think of what else you could use instead of a trap. And we have just found over the years the number of dogs that we actually have to trap has gone down substantially because we have gotten a lot better at our feeding stations and at learning the pattern of the dog's behavior and at getting the owner to calm down and sit out there quietly um, and lure the dog to them. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, we, we now don't trap nearly as many dogs as we used to. We, and we have a better success rate. Um, so, but, but thinking about where else you could trap the dog, maybe it's going to be in some, you know, in a garage or in a, a tennis court or in a fence, a pool enclosure or something like that, you know, mm -hmm. um, is, is also another really good option instead of just trying to, you know, think, thinking that you absolutely need to run out there and buy a large dog trap mm -hmm. um, when, when you may not need to. Yeah, those are all really good ideas, um, and I think, you know, this is something important for people to realize, just like you said, you don't need to spend a lot of money to do mm -hmm. all the very important things you need to do. You just need to do them, you know? Right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, exactly. And if you have some extra money, because, I mean, I think, I mean, we, we haven't had a lot of people use it, but there's that, that um, every door direct mail, um that is not is not really all that expensive, but it is it you know it's it definitely costs some money. I think I I can't I I don't want to say, but it seems to me that you can get things delivered for about fourteen cents per um, item, mm -hmm. and you can target which zip codes you want to reach. But the only thing with that is you have to print them exactly to the post office specification. So don't expect that you could just take. A regular flyer into the post office, and they will mail them for that price because they won't. They have to be on a certain kind of paper, and they have to be printed to certain specifications. So it is on the website on the United States Postal Service website. It's called Every Door Direct Mail. But that is one thing that if somebody had some extra money to spend, that would be one thing that I would say that's probably a good investment, especially if they can't get out and do the hand delivering of flyers themselves. Yeah, yeah, and because it is a little tough right now, um, and maybe yeah. quickly because we've only got like I think one minute left. Um, oh, wow. okay. I think I know it always goes by so quick. Um, rolling up, rolling up a flyer, maybe, and sticking it on the um, the flag of the mailbox versus in. You can never put it in. Um, right. but you could roll it up and stick it, you know, in between the down flag and the side of the mailbox, you know, because yep. some, yep. it is a little frightening right now with COVID that, um, yep. you know, people won't always answer their doors if they don't know you, right. but you could always wave the flyer, uh, hold it up and just leave it on the yes. door or something, yes. you know, <laughs> so you have to get a little creative sometimes, I think. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Well, Kathy, this flew by as usual, but you gave some great, amazing tips for everybody. And if you could just quickly tell everyone how to look up the Lost Dogs of America information online. Yeah, so we're lostdogsofamerica.org. On the, that's our website. And then on Facebook, we're just Lost Dogs of America. 
So we try to share different stories almost every day. Yep. And Lost Dogs America is across all the United States, and uh, they work together with Helping Lost Pets, where you can get free flyers directed right to your state with a bunch of volunteers there to help you out if you don't have a local lost pet organization um, that does that for you. They are the best. So um, thanks again, Kathy. Okay. And um, we'll talk again next month. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. You're welcome. So remember, everybody, that a lost pet can't tell anyone where it lives, so please be sure they are microchipped and wearing their ID tags. And if it is chipped, be sure that chip is registered and up to date. Thanks for joining us today, and until next time, take care and keep your pets safe.